responsibilities and all this going on and it seems like I'm doing everything I can for you and everything is just going opposite. Anybody ever been there where it seems like you were doing all you could to do and feel you took two steps forward and you took five steps back and you said, you said, God, what, you know, what in the world is going on? I was sitting in my kitchen and, and I didn't understand it and then these words came I said, Lord, you are good. You've been so good, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. Oh, you, my life, can't praise you enough. Even me. Come on, tell them today. Good evening, good evening. Bless your abundant life. God, is there anybody that God's been good to on tonight? Hallelujah. Song said he's opened doors for us. He's made ways for us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we bless him on tonight. So good evening, abundant life. We are honored to be here tonight on another Bible study class another bible study night we thank god 
for this awesome technology that allows us to connect spiritually, allows us to um, give the word of God to each and every one that will listen you know, from our homes, our cars, our work, wherever we are. But, but I want us to be connected. This wasn't always the case that we were able to do this. So we thank God for having this technology in this season. So we do want to honor our bishop on tonight, Bishop Joel Lofton. We thank God for him. We thank God for his leadership. We thank God for the shepherd that he is, for the love that he shows, the compassion and caring that he shows to each and every one of us. We truly thank God for him. So we want to dive right into the word of the Lord on tonight. But before we begin, we do want to start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you on tonight for allowing us to uh, just see another day, Lord, allowing us to come together in this class on tonight, Lord. We thank you for each and every listener, each and every observer, Lord. We thank you for them, Lord. I'm asking you that you use me on tonight, Lord. Touch my lips of clay, Lord. Give me the words to say, Lord, that someone will be edified, someone will be encouraged, and someone will be encouraged be comforted as we continue to grow and become more like you. These things I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So we want to dive <clears throat> we want to dive right in to what God has given us on tonight. In the last couple of weeks we have been talking about um, the faith, <clears throat> understanding faith. So we kind of broke it down and started at a uh, grassroots level in our first class, understanding what, what faith is, how we obtain faith. We moved into uh, faith cometh by hearing. So in that teaching, we understand that hearing by the word of the Lord, it's not limited only to the scripture. I connect my faith to what I heard God say. Um, we can, we understand that the just shall live by faith. So last week, what we, what we really tried to teach last week was what that looked like, uh, modeling that lifestyle. I'm um, using Peter and Paul of what that looks like, living by faith. Living by faith is not uh, I sit around and do nothing and just believe God that everything is going to work out. Living by faith is my life become becomes attached to what God says. My life is led out, is walked out through what God said, uh, the instructions that God gives me, the mandates, the commandments that God gives me. Um, so, so just shall live by the righteousness of God is revealed. Be, being in right standing with God is revealed to us from faith to faith. So our faith has to grow. Our faith has to, has to be nurtured, matured, and grow. We may start off at a smaller level, but we grow to a higher level of faith. That's how the just shall live by faith. And then we are changed from his image, from glory to glory. Um, uh, uh, that's why sometimes you'll hear some of the older saints call it a faith walk. Um, we, we are, we're changed, we, we grow, we, we continually uh, uh, move in God where we're not stagnant on one level. We, we were changed the same image of God from glory to glory. So that is the, the movement of our life through faith. So I'm we're still going to talk um, a little bit, teach a little bit on faith tonight, but I'm still going into staying with the, the, the theme of the just shall live by faith. Still showing and teaching um, how faith is supposed to be part of our everyday life. How faith is supposed to be a a lifestyle, a faith walk, a life of faith. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to go Old Testament and New Testament. We, we're going to give 
give you both of them. But in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass. Now, here, here is a guarantee from God. Mm. That, that's one of the the one of the things that we we must understand is where our faith is connected to what God says because God doesn't give maybes and I don't know God gives guarantees. Mm. Ooh, that's a word right there for somebody. God gives guarantees. People will tell you maybe. People will tell you I don't know. People will change their mind on you, but when God gives you a word, God guarantees what he says. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right, I'm going to park right there. That's where so many people have went wrong. Have lost their way, uh, never cashed in on the promises of God that he had for them, that never got the good things, never received the things. We talked about the things that God has prepared. It all goes back to hearing from God. If thou shalt hearken diligently, if you look at the other translations, the, the hearken is listen. If thou shalt listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Many, many, I've talked this on many different occasions, is that for some reason we get over into Christ and, and people uh, don't seem to understand what diligently means. Diligent is I persevere after it. I, I seek after it. I, I, I go after it no matter what the odds, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the obstacles are. I'm diligent about it. So if I'm going after it, I have to have it. I have to possess it. I'm diligent. See, any anybody in our church, anybody in our listening audience that, that has a degree, a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, they could tell you what diligent is. <laughs> Because you don't obtain higher levels of anything without being diligent about it. Uh, 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 seeking after it, uh, uh, studying, going after the doctors and the nurses. I had a friend that was studying to become a nurse and, and, and the, the, the words and the terminology and the things she had to remember what were mind boggling to me. I could not even believe that all the things that you had to learn to be a nurse, not even a doctor, a nurse, you have to go, diligently go after it. So if you have to study and pull all nighters and cut out partying and, and hanging out with your friends and make that first in your life to get your doctorate, God's asking you to listen to him diligently. It, it is the, the, the seeking after. The, the not, and, and, and I'm so diligent. I, I, I listen to what God says, and I don't even listen to what the detractors say about what I'm trying to do. Because I'm so focused. Yeah, God just gave me that word. I'm so focused on what God said that I don't have time to listen to what people say. Uh, diligence and faith are so connected. He even connected them in Hebrews 11 and 6, where it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that sometimes, part time, every now and then, no, diligently seek him. The reward only comes through your diligence. No different than in the natural. It comes through your diligence. You pursue that degree. You pursue that education. You pursue that business. No one, no one's business is successful if they don't diligently try to make it work. It's all, it's all in the, the amount of time and the effort that you put in it. He said, diligently listen. 
I, I was talking to somebody just this weekend and they said something uh, derogatory about themselves. And I had to remind them of the scripture of the teaching that you are snared by the words of your mouth. See, in my diligence, he said, hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord. So I listen to what God says, despite what people say. See, that, that has been one of the biggest reasons why so many people don't get what they're supposed to get. It's because they've, li they've listened to too many people. See, I, I know, I know, I, I know. I, I, you don't even have to tell me. I, I know people told you you were never going to be anything. I, I know your mother told you, you you would never succeed. I know your father told you you would never succeed. But see, like I told this person, you're snared by the words of your mouth because the problem comes in is when you say you'll never succeed. Woo, my God. It, it, the problem comes in is when the enemy, it was when people tell you that you won't make it and then you repeat it because now you've connected to that negativity and now you believe them instead of believing God. You listen to them instead of listening to God. I, I got a news flash for you about, about what people will tell you about what you're trying to do. Watch this. Most people who cannot do something will automatically assume you can't do it. If they couldn't start a business, they'll tell you you can't start a business. Oh my God, if they can't have a successful marriage, they'll tell you you can't have a success. See, you are, will never be stopped what pe by what people say about you. You will be stopped by what you say about you. But he said, listen, diligently to the voice of the Lord. Why are we following based upon what people tell us? See, see it's the reason why people tell you you can't do it because they're not connected to a God that's leading and guiding you. With, without God on your side, you probably can't do it. So then how can you go into it without hearkening to the voice of God? The, the, the voice of God that gives you direction, the voice of God that gives you uh, guidance, the voice of God that tells you the yes and the no's and the do and the don't do. H how can you go into it without hearkening to the voice of the Lord? Yeah, they, they told you, you you'll never succeed. They told you you'll never make it. They told you you'll never be nothing. They told you you'll never be anybody. They told you you can't have a business. They told you that black people can't do it. They told you that you're too old. You're too slow. You're not educated enough. I know what they told you, but will you hearken diligently to the voice of God? Somebody's got to catch this in the spirit. Because I don't even have a lot of notes. But God told me to jot this down with my scriptures. He said, don't, catch this prophetically. He said, don't be afraid to be the first. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody catch that, catch that in your spirit. Don't be afraid to be the first. What's that mean, Pastor Tim? Don't be afraid to be the first lawyer. Don't be afraid to be the first doctor in your family. Don't be afraid to be the first business owner in your family. Oh my God, receive this somebody. I'm gonna receive this for myself. Don't be afraid to be the first millionaire in your family. Woo, my God. Don't be afraid to be the first. Yeah, yeah, but but, but I gotta listen to God. Uh, tie that in the scripture, uh, Pastor Tim. Uh, Noah had to be the first one. Oh, my God, to say it was going to rain. They'd never seen rain before. Oh, my God, they'd never seen rain before. Noah had to be the first one to say that it was going to rain. He had to tell people. He had, he had to preach to people. He had to tell them something was going to happen that they had never seen before. He had to be the first one. Mm, 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 mm. I'll never forget when God dropped that in my spirit about Noah. He said, just because you've never seen it before doesn't mean I can't do it. Maybe you never seen somebody that go from rags to riches. Oh my God. Maybe you never seen somebody get healed from cancer. Maybe you never seen somebody get delivered from drinking, from smoking, from judgment. Just because you never seen it before doesn't mean 
God can't do it. Yeah, yeah. We, we are to be echoes of God. Whew, my God. We say what God says. We don't say what people say. If you're an echo of what God said, why are you still repeating what your mama said about you when you were a teenage girl? Why are you still repeating what your daddy said about you when you were a young man? Why are we still repeating what, what the enemy said about us, what people said about us, instead of echoing what God said? If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord. See, see, that's the leading and the guiding that he does in your life. That, so that so that what wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> or, or even, let's go this way. What was supposed to happen doesn't happen. Because God led me right around it. God led me right around. The just shall live by faith. But what's my faith connected to? The word of the Lord. Notice he said, if thou shalt hearken. The if means God puts the onus on you. He says, I, I, I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to beat you over the head. By simply saying, if God puts it on you. That's why there's people that can say, I, I don't feel like I'm blessed. I, I don't feel like I'm living a blessed life. I don't feel like I'm living a successful life. Uh, it, then the question becomes, are you living by faith? And, and the faith is connected to not what you said, but is your faith connected to what God said? Or are you living by faith? If you will hearken diligently, to observe and to do all his commandments, <clears throat> which I commanded thee this day. Have you done what God has commanded you to do today? <laughs> How many things have we left undone? I, I say we. How many things have we left undone? How many, how many things has God commanded us to do? See, this all goes back to a personal relationship with God. This is outside of the Ten Commandments and, and tithes and all. This goes back to your personal relationship with God. What has God commanded you to do? Have we hearkened diligently to what he's commanded us to do? Or have we tuned God out on the parts that we don't want to do? To his commandments, to observe them. That the Lord, thy God, will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So, so we, we want the blessings. We want what comes with, with what the, the blessings and the promises we hear of God. But, but have we attached our life to his word, to his commandments, to his voice in such a way that God can just move us easily through what he has designed and planned for us. See, our lives, our lives, our lives change when we got into God. Supposed to change. Once we got into God, the, the old man was supposed to die. That also means old nature, old character. Watch this. Old plans. Plans change. When you get, I, I heard a preacher laugh. I know it's been around forever. If you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. To tell him what, tell him what you plan to do. Tell him what you plan to happen. If you want to hear him laugh, because we don't understand the plan of God. We're supposed to be willing vessels that God uses to carry out his plan, his purpose. That's why everything we pray for, our question to God, our question should, to ourselves should be, is it for our purpose or God's purpose? Do I need this for my purpose or do I need this for God's purpose? At least I'm honest with if it's for my purpose, at least I can be honest and, and tell God that this is just something that I want. See, that puts you in position where, where if you're honest enough with God, you have that dialogue where he tells you that's not something for you to have at all or something for you to have right now. Every good gift 
is not is not to be given at at this at, at every time. So as we walk through this life, as we walk consecrated, dedicated, living by faith through God, our life is supposed to be about sowing the, the seeds that God will have us. Now, I want to stop right there with seed and make sure we understand that it's not just money. Seeds are not limited to just money. So I'm, I'm going into, I talked about this weeks ago, the agricultural piece that, that God gave me that I had not taught yet. But in Sunday, as Bishop was teaching, God gave me the release because there were some of the things that God had told me that Bishop confirmed right in Sunday morning service so he said, go ahead and release this. It's time. He, he said, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's always going to be, our life should be a representative of, of, of reaping and sowing. Why do you think he said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If he said, whatsoever then that has to give us the understanding that it's not just money. Those of us that's lacking on love, the question becomes, are you sowing love? Because if you sow love, you have to reap love. Those of us that are, are getting forgiveness, if you sow forgiveness, you'll reap forgiveness. He tied this to this so that it, it does not matter. The world calls it karma. The world calls it what goes around comes around. Uh, but he's tied it to this so that no matter what you do, you can depend on, you can bank on the guarantee that it's coming back to you. He set this up. Let me, let me go ahead and put my, my teacher hat all the way on. He set it up in this way from the foundation of the world. Let me go all the way back to creation. As he, he created the world, the world uh, you will realize this now, is what God did was he created a reproductive system in, in, in the, the plants, animals, humans. You, you ever notice that unless you kill it, your, your grass grows back every spring? Even though it appears to die off, tr trees grow back automatically. The birds feed themselves. Animals in the wild feed themselves. Humans reproduce. Animals reproduce. Why is this? It's so that he would not have to come off the throne again and recreate anything. <laughs> he create. He put a system in place. So that we, a reproductive system in place, even even it goes all the way down to the bees pollinating trees and flowers so that they will reproduce. The, all, the whole system God put in play, place so that he wouldn't have to get off the throne and come back again to recreate again. What I'm trying to teach here tonight is God put a system in place. <laughs> Somebody go catch it in the spirit. God put a system in place so that you would not have to ask him continually <laughs> for the things that you need. Oh, my God. The system he put in place is if you were continually sowing. Oh, my God. You would always be reaping. So then you would not find yourself having to ask God for things that you need. Mm, 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 mm. That's why in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, he said, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He said, If you only sow a little bit, you're only going to reap a little bit. So anyone that can't figure out why you're lacking, you don't have enough, the first thing you need to check is how much have you been sowing. Mm, mm, mm. Not just money. Anybody lacking in love? How much love have you sold? Anyone lacking forgiveness? How much forgiveness have you sold? 
Oh, it even goes to the evil side. Anybody getting a whole bunch of hate? How much hate have you sowed? Oh my God! How, how, how much? How, how much uh, backbiting have you sold? You? How, how many? Uh, how many backstabbings have you done? Is that what you? You see, you you're always going to be reaping. The question becomes: Are you reaping what you expect to sow? See, I I, I expect to reap based upon what I sow. So so here here gets the teaching. I'm telling you, the bishop was all in my, my teaching. That's why God gave me the release. He said, come on out with it. He said, I'm going to bless the works of your hands. See, we, we were never designed. We never came over here in, into God. We were never came in here expecting for us to do nothing and God to do everything. It was never designed for us to sit back and just shout and dance and pray and God's going to do everything and I do nothing. No, no, no. He, he, he said he'll bless the work of your hands. He even went as far in the Philippians and said, excuse me, work out your own soul salvation. You you even got to work for salvation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it was never supposed to be. I don't do anything. Even in your spiritual destiny, we, we, I mean, we sometimes we can take this as, oh, it's destined to happen. If it was supposed to happen, I'm going to sit back and God give it to me. No, no, no. That, that's not the way it goes. Our destiny is not about doing nothing and God does everything. Away with that notion that I'm going to sit and God's just going to bless me. No, no, it's never. There's too many scriptures about sowing and reaping. There's too many scriptures about the work, the work of the ministry, uh, what we're supposed to be doing for God. He, he left it to faithful men for the work of the ministry. Faithful. Faithful means I did something that somebody could depend on me to show up and be there and do what needs to be done. Faithful men. How can you accomplish that by doing nothing? So this is one of, one of bishops from his Friday night teaching. God dropped that in my spirit and said, go on, take it to the next level. You know, everybody knows me and Bishop are, are connected in the spirit. But in Genesis 8 and 22, this talks about, like I said, I'm going to put my teacher hat all the way on. He said, while the earth remaineth, that means in other words, as long as the earth is still here, as long as you still walking on this earth, Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, sun and wind, and day and night shall not cease. As long as you here on earth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. That means you will never stop sowing and you should never stop reaping. But how can you reap anything if you haven't sowed anything? See, a sower's lifestyle is connected to faith. It's connected to faith in God because I sow when and where God tells me. My faith, therefore, is connected to God. So then I expect to reap. Not because I'm greedy. Not because I just want things. It's because I gave out. Now I need God to replenish so I can give out again. See, if I never get replenished, I become a limited resource. If I run out, I cannot continue sowing. When he said, seed time and harvest will never cease. My God, so if God doesn't replenish my seed, Woo, how can he expect me to keep sowing? See that that's a level, that's a level of faith. That's a level, I, I know the world has taught you keep all your money in the bank. I know the world has taught you keep everything you have. The, the, the way of the world is the more I accumulate, the more I have. But no, that's not the way of God. The way of God is the more you sow, the more you reap. He said, I will pour you out a blessing. That you will not have room enough to receive. That means I give you back more than you get. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So many people miss, miss, miss their season. They, they, they miss their, their time. They miss the time of harvest because they did not sow in the, the season of sowing. I, I know Bishop said this on Friday and God jumped this out in my spirit where he talked about you didn't reap what you were expecting because you played around in the, in the sowing time. You didn't harvest what you were expecting because you wasted your sowing time. And God said to me right then and there, don't miss your time stuck in an old season. Woo, my God. He said to everything there's a season and a time. Some folks are missing out on the time because they're stuck in an old season. I didn't get my time, my, my time of harvest. Oh, I was in the wrong timeline. Oh my God. I wasn't in the right place at the right time because I was stuck in an old season. That season was, oh, oh my God. That season is over. I, I, I move into the new season on the direction. Hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord so that I don't miss my harvest time. Yeah, don't don't miss it. Don't don't miss. Don't don't miss your, your harvest time. He can't think of everybody's getting blessed but me. Everybody's getting something but me. What am I doing wrong? That's what you need to know. What, what, what am I doing wrong? Because there's a time and a season. We're all not going to get it at the same time. But at some time, oh my God, and he said, whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. If I keep sowing, then I have to reap. I'm going to give you this in the New new Living Translation, the NLT. It's Deuteronomy 11 and 14. It says, then he will send the rains in their proper season. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, you can't make the seasons about what you want. The seasons can't be based upon what you want. The seasons have to be connected to what God tells you. Uh, my, my wife was telling me about a, a friend and, and she had talked to and helped and, and consoled or whatever. And then things kind of fell apart. I told her, season, reason, lifetime. Maybe that was just a seasonal friend. If, if that season's over with, let that thing go. Because if that person drags you back into that old season, you'll miss your time. He said, I'll send the rains in the proper season. That, that means I have to be so connected to where God wants me to be. I'm in the right season. He said, the early and the late rains. I, I give it to you both. I, 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 give you, I give you the rain early. I give it to you late. So watch this. So you can bring in your harvest of grain, of new wine, of olive oil. <clears throat> Why am I bringing this up? He said, I'll send the rain in the proper season. So if I wasted my time in the season, or I'm in the wrong season, or worst case scenario, I haven't sown anything. What difference does it make if God sends the rain when I have nothing to reap? See, if I didn't sow anything, I don't have anything to reap. But all of this reaping, he's talking about grain. Shout about new wine. You're talking about oil. All that sounds good. All the blessings of love. I and mean, we, we can imagine getting all the things that God has for us. All the things that God has prepared for us. We can imagine getting those things. But watch this. In order, he said this is in harvest time. This isn't just I sit around and do nothing and God dumps a bunch of blessings on me. This is harvest time. Which means I had to work at sowing something. Mm. And because God's given me a multiplicity of harvest in different areas, that means I had to be sowing 
oh my God, in different areas. That means I had to be continually sowing. So I, I'm sowing over here, and I'm sowing over there, and I, I'm sowing into, into this person. I, I'm sowing into my ministry. I'm sowing love. I'm sowing kindness. Oh, my God. I'm sowing forgiveness. I'm sowing all over the place. That's the only way I'm going to reap. Whew, my God, from all over the place. That's the only way I'm going to get a bumper crop is because I sowed in multiple places. In other words, my entire life becomes about sowing. Not money exclusively, but wherever God leads me, I sow into someone's life. I sow a smile, whew, my God, into someone's life. I sow a prophetic word. I sow a scripture. I sow a prayer. I, I, I sacrifice. I sow time. I, I sow. I'm continually sowing. Every day becomes about sowing into someone's life. Why? Because I represent God every day. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, so, so in order to, to, to here's something I got from this too. To get this kind of a harvest, I had to do that much sowing. Anybody else get this from this? So then, being blessed becomes a whole lot of work. Being continually blessed becomes a whole lot of work because. I had to do a whole lot of sewing. I, I had to help a lot of people. I, I had to pray for people, spend time in prayer. I had to witness to people. I had to take some money out of my pocket that God blessed me with and sew into people. I, 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 had, I, I had to uh, listen to people. I had to give an encouraging word to someone. I had to help somebody. I had to reach out to somebody. I, I continually sew. So in order to get this kind of blessing, it required a whole lot of work. Being blessed is hard work. So to receive this type of blessing means I have to do something. I, I didn't just sit back on, uh, and rest on my laurels on the fact that I, I serve God, that I praised God Sunday, that I shouted, that I danced, that I worshiped, that I spoke in tongues, that I listened to the word on Sunday. Because my, my excuse me, relationship with God is not limited to Sunday morning. My relationship with God it is a living seven day a week, 24 hour a day relationship. The just shall live by faith. You don't just live on Sunday morning, do you? I live, live, live. My relationship is every day. God blesses what you do. God blesses what you do. Let me give you, let me, let, I love teaching the Bible. Let me give you Bible for that. It's based on what I did. It's based on, on what I sowed. It's based on what I did for God. It's based on my obedience. It's based on me observing his commandments, what, what he tells me to do, what he tells me what not to do. I'm blessed based on what I do. Look at Psalms chapter 1. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in what? His seeds. Oh, my God. Brings forth fruit in his seed. I got to be in the right season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Many people wondering why they're not prospering. The question becomes, what have you done? <laughs> whatsoever you do doeth shall prosper. But I even had someone ask me once that was going through a situation and it looked like what they were doing was not prospering. I said, well, go, because I had taught from this verse. I said, but go to the beginning of the verse. And he shall be like a tree 
planted. That This verse does not mean you will never go through a situation. You will never have an issue. But because you're like a tree that's planted, when the situation comes, you might bend, but you don't break. Oh my God, it doesn't mean you'll never face a hurricane, a winds, a storm. It just means you're planted and your roots run deep so that you might bend, but you don't break. See, I, I taught it like this. When, when you go through that, it's just God testing your roots. It doesn't mean you won't go through it, but when you come out of it, he said, whatsoever you doeth shall prosper. And the same person that asked me about this verse, they went through something, but now they are prospering. You cannot tell me it's not based on what you do. Whatsoever you doeth shall prosper. And continual, continual, continual sowing, continual reaping. It's a lifestyle, a lifestyle, a lifestyle. You, you can't tell me this is not what God has intended. I teased about this one a couple of weeks ago. This is on the agricultural side of it. He said, Seed time and harvest will, will never cease. As long as you're on the earth, it, it, it'll never cease. But watch this. Sometimes God hides your blessings in the seed. Your, your blessing, your blessing was in the seed. You, you didn't even know. You, you, you didn't understand it. But the, the blessing was in the seed. You, you prayed and asked God for a tree. You, you prayed and asked God for an apple tree, but, but God only gave you an apple. Why? Because the tree is in the seed. The, 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 the tree comes out of the seed. It comes out of the seed. See, God doesn't always give you what you ask for. Sometimes he just gives you the seed. Mm, mm, mm. And you're looking at the seed. You can't figure out what, what's going on, why God gave you this. But, but the blessing is hid in the seed. It's hid in the seed. There's just a couple testimonies. I, I checked with that person because they told this testimony. Just wanted to make sure I had all the facts right. God, God will hide your blessing in the seed. And these these two testimonies will show you that the seed is not limited to money. It can be money, but it's not limited to money. But my wife and I were, were desiring something that we were looking for for our home, and we just could not find it. We we, we couldn't find what we wanted. We could, couldn't find anything that fit within our budget. If we if we found it, if we liked it. It didn't fit in our budget. If it was within our budget. It wasn't what we wanted. I said, God, did you know, we, we we make our petitions to God. God, we've done what we were supposed to do. It's in your hands. But somebody asked me for a seed. Whew, my God. The moment I sowed a seed into someone's life, that same day, we found exactly what we were looking for. Right within our budget, the information was dropped right in our lap. Right after I sold that seed. God will hide your blessing in the seed. Now, this is, this is Minister Veronica's testimony. Now, I love this one. She said that her, her brother Mark saw someone on the, on the road, their car had broke down. I said, every seed is not about money. Their car had broke down. To so being a good Samaritan, being a good Christian, they stopped to help this man. They picked him up, gave him a ride. And on the ride in the car, they asked the man asked them, you know, what was going on? They're talking about life. They said they want to take a trip uh, with our bishop overseas. And the man asked them, well, how much does, does the plane tickets cost? And they said, oh, it, it's it's up there. The plane tickets are about eighteen hundred dollars. So they, they left it at that, dropped the man off. He thanked them. And I don't remember how much time passed, but they went, it was a local person. They went 
into the restaurant and the in the restaurant the waitress came up to them and handed them an envelope they opened it up in that envelope there was 18 100 dollar bills god hid their blessing in the seed that the seed of kindness that my god that the seed of kindness it, god will hide it in a seed that's why we're always supposed to be sowing i love bishop lofton's testimony of never even desiring international ministry, never desiring to go overseas, Africa, UK, South Africa, anywhere. But because God told him, if you will hearken, because God told him to go to that service that night, he seen Bishop Lupia in need of a ride back to his hotel, never even knowing who he was, never knew anything about him. But that seed of kindness, that seed of help, giving Bishop Lupia that ride back to the hotel, Bishop didn't even know the blessing that God had hid in that seed, opened him up to international ministry, opened him up to connections all over this world. All of that was hid in a seed. Who has God told you to be kind to that you don't understand the blessing you're missing out on? Who has God told you to help? You don't even understand the blessing you're missing out. Oh my God. You don't even understand the blessings, the blessings that God has waiting for you that are hid in seeds, hid in seeds all over, all over. They're hid in seeds. We don't even know we're forfeiting our blessing. My God, because we're not sowing seeds. Hidden, hidden, hidden in seeds. Woo, my God. No, we don't give to get. No, but, but at the same time, he, he's contractual with his word. Whatsoever a man soweth, the, the simplest form is if you don't sow nothing good, <laughs> You can't expect to reap nothing good. Yeah. Yeah, he hides it. He hides it in the seed. So he says, he says, in our text scripture, Deuteronomy 28, he said that you, you he'll, I'll set you up on high. I would just, just got out the first verse. But in the second verse, if you hearken, remember the if, the if becomes on you. The, the onus, the responsibility becomes on you. It, if you hearken. Verse 2 says, and all these blessings shall come on thee. And all these blessings shall come on thee. Th that means I'm not looking for blessings. Blessings are looking for me. That means I'm not going around asking to be blessed. Blessings are just coming my way. Because if I'm sowing good seeds all the time, that means good things have always going to be looking for me, tracking me down, that I'm walking into them because of my lifestyle. He said, and overtake thee, my God, in the translation that overtake, if you translate it to English, means take over. All these blessings shall come on thee and take over the blessings knocking you down. You, my God, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. See, th these are the promises that God makes where we don't understand uh, um, why sometimes we don't see this happening in our life. But sometimes we may have either missed or don't understand the prerequisite that comes along with these types of blessings. Blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee 
if you will hearken, if you will listen to God's voice. Now, this is the one we get happy about. In chapter, in verse three, blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed shall be in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Now, now watch this. I, I could almost dance on this one. This... this he, he said, blessed shalt thou be in the city, blessed shalt thou be in the field. Well, watch this. Does anybody else get this out of this? He's not saying the place is going to be blessed. He, he's saying you're going to be blessed. So it, it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to be blessed. See, if you're in the city, you're going to be blessed. If you're in the field, you're going to be blessed. The things aren't blessed. You're going to be blessed. So it doesn't matter. If you're on the job, you're going to be blessed. You could lose the job. You're going to be blessed. If I'm upsized, I'm going to be blessed. If they downsize me, I'm still going to be blessed. If I do this, the blessing's on me, not on the place. Because I lose this job, I go to another job, I take the blessing. Oh, I take the blessing with me to that job. Oh, my God. The blessing's on me, not on the place. So it doesn't matter where I go. In the hospital, I'm blessed. Out the hospital, I'm blessed. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. The blessing is on me. Oh, my God. Married, I'm blessed. Divorced, I'm blessed. Oh, it, the blessing is on me, not on the place. Yeah, let me go if you want. I'm taking the blessing with oh. Oh my God, the blessing's coming with me. The, the blessing is coming with me. The blessing's on me wherever I go. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to be blessed. That, that's how blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Because it doesn't matter. I'm blessed when I go to the car lot. I'm oh my God. I'm blessed when I go to the bank. I'm blessed wherever I go. I'm blessed because I take the blessing with me. He said. I will be blessed. The ball, my, my field don't have to be blessed. I have the blessing. I carry the blessing. I carry it with me. And all these blessings shall come upon thee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the place, the, the, the place don't carry the blessing. The place doesn't house the blessing. I carry the blessing. I carry it. I carry it. I go in the store. The blessings on me. My my money runs short. It's the the price gets slashed. Oh shoot! My God! I only because I sold. I only got fifty percent. The price becomes fifty percent. Oh my! Woo! My God! Yeah! 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 They laying off. It's okay. That this place is laying off. The other place is hiring. Uh oh! And I walk into a job making more money because the blessings on me. Not on the place. That place was only blessed because I was there. Woo! They thought they, they thought they thought they was doing something good. They thought they was doing something right. It was only blessed because I was there. It was only successful because I was there. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 I, I hear it spiritually. If somebody wants to leave you, let them leave. Oh, my God. They was only blessed because they was with you. Oh my God, they were only blessed because they were with you. Things were only successful because they were with you. Oh. Woo, I got to get out of here. Yeah, let them leave you if they want. Let, let them kick you out the family if they want. The family was only, oh, I got to leave it alone. The family was only blessed because of you. The, the family wasn't blessed, you was the blessing. Oh my God. So it becomes... A lifestyle. I, I just God just said teach this because we talked about living by faith. That the just shall live by faith. He said, give a, a deeper understanding. See, you understand in this scenario, that this type of teaching, how you're not consistently asking God for things. You you're led by God, led by God 
into things. Therefore, God already knows what you need. So he provides on the level and when you need it. But it's based upon what you do. If you will hearken diligently. I told my wife I was laugh, laughing. I said I was laughing at myself and uh, moving into in the, the, the different areas of business arena that I'm doing now. So I, uh, I, made, I made a bid on a property and uh, they came back and said it came down between you and two people. So I knew how much money that they wanted for this property. So I was talking to my realtor and I said, um, well, I know they want this price. So we should say this price and, and we'll probably get it. I was laughing at my wife and I said, but then something said, <laughs> I said, something said, do this price. But no, I was, I was teasing her. I said, God said, whoo, my God, God said, bid this price. Want to call me right back? And she said, you got it. And it was just the amount of money that you said that was over what we talked about. No, it wasn't something said. God said. God said, you, you'll be blessed. So the blessing is on you. He, has, he knows what you need and when you need it. So when you live this type of lifestyle, the reproductive system that God put in place that works for the animals and the grass and the plants and reproduction in people, the reproducting, reproductive blessings of God will work in your life as well. I'm just going to stop right here. This, this is our time. We only want to go about an hour. I love, I love just teaching about the blessings of God. So I, I, I wanted to give this tonight to help uh, that with an understanding of, of living by faith, understanding the expectation God has for us. So as always, I pray that something was said that will help and encourage you on this night. This is our normal Tuesday night Bible study. It's also our offering night. All of our electronic giving is available. PayPal, Cash App, GiveLify. Um, if you have any questions with any of those, feel free to contact Sister Shelly Berryhill, and she'll be more than happy to help assist you. So until we meet again, may the Lord bless you, keep you, and make his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.